Hi everybody, welcome to the Evangelist Nick Garrett channel. Before we get started, please hit subscribe, like, leave a comment, something to help survive this algorithm age for our channel. If you're new, thanks for subscribing and hang in there. We're getting into the Gospel of Matthew today and you're going to learn about Christian denominations and a wider message about the Lord Jesus. If you follow me regularly, You've probably noticed I haven't put out much recently, and I, I've got to confess what I've been going through personally. You know, I, I sensed that there were some things in my own Christian life that needed some attention. It gets easy to get in front of the camera and teach church history, but I, I, I kind of been going through this period of analyzing, well, what am I doing in my Christian life? What does my Christian service look like? What does my Christian prayer life look like? So I've been doing some adjustments, getting myself more plugged in to the Christian communities around me to do actual things and not just talk. That, that was important to me because uh, I care a lot about this. You know, for me, this is the most serious subject in human history. Uh, I pray that God blesses our work, that our work bears fruit. What that means is I pray that what we do here touches people out there and turns them around, helps them turn their life to Christ, that they hear the gospel through this work. I can't think of anything more serious than that. So I've been doing a lot of self-analysis there. Uh, I am still working on the new Christian history of the church. Part 19 is going to be on the Council of Ephesus. It's, uh, it's on the chopping block. I'm working on it now. A uh, couple other ideas, but today I want to get into something. I want to continue in the Gospel of Matthew, but tie it to a much broader message. So far, we've done Matthew chapter 1, chapter 2, and the first part of chapter 3, where I'm out in the garden with the axe, and, and John the Baptist says, you know, you'd be cut off and thrown in the fire. Fire? Who's bringing fire? The one that comes after him, Jesus. He's going to bring the Holy Spirit and fire. And here's what I want to say to you. Your Christianity, my Christianity, this picture we all have of Christian unity, of a perfect union in the past at the beginning, does not exist. Your Christianity is weighed in the eyes of God according to scripture by what happens when someone knocks on your door and by what happens when you are on your knees in prayer. The New Testament does not provide a message that says there should be one single unified denomination and that if there is not that somebody is wrong and somebody is right. Outside of the Bible, the first noted historian, Hegesippus in the 140s, talks about seven different sects of Christianity. The very world that Christianity was born into was very sectarian Judaism. So can we find a common denominator in all of this? Yes, we can. I want to start in Matthew 3, uh, picking up where we left off last time. What had happened was John the Baptist gained popularity. He was baptizing with water, but repent because one's coming after me. And all the people came from Jerusalem, Judea, and the Jordan. That to me is a big deal. The Bible says that everyone came. Probably not literally every person, but it makes a point to say everyone came out to this dude wearing camel hair with a leather belt, eating locusts. He's not caring about human secular society. He is living a life as if something's coming now you don't understand. And they're all coming out to him, including Pharisees, Sadducees. We tend to think of them as the religious of the time, the institution but I want you to understand, we learned in our Dead Sea Scrolls series, which you can watch, we have 10 videos in it, that Pharisees aren't just a religious group. Uh, it's a secular group that happens to have some religious principles. You have the Sadducees, you have Zealots, you have Sakari, you have Nazarenes, you have Essenes. 
In fact, the 2005 edition of the Dead Sea Scrolls by Wise, Abegg Jr., and Cook, that edition, they kind of turn on its head the theory of the Essene community and they instead say, hey, it looks like what was happening was that as Rome took over more and more territory, these areas were being used as a repository for records, not that a thriving community of Essenes were necessarily are very interesting, but I don't want to get sidetracked. But John the Baptist, the, the, they come and he says, you brood of vipers, who warned you about what was coming? It, it, it almost sounds sarcastic. And then he goes on to say to him, bear fruit worthy of repentance. Don't think to say for yourselves, we have Abraham as our father. For I say to you that God is able to raise up children of Abraham from these stones. Remember this. What is he saying? Your connection to Abraham does not matter anymore. Your lineage does not matter anymore. Your denomination does not matter. Who you are connected to does not matter. We're talking about something much bigger. Someone's coming. It's going to be about you and God and your spirit. And I'm going to lay out the evidence for you today to show you that it appears that Jesus Christ was calling people unto himself out of all institutions. He was not creating a sect. He was not creating a religion. He was not creating a denomination. Let's go on. I indeed baptize you with water under repentance, but he is coming who is mightier than I, whose sandals I'm not worthy to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit, and fire. His winnowing fan is in his hand. And he will thoroughly clean out his threshing floor. And he will gather his wheat into the barn. But he will burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. I'm going to show you a picture of a winnowing fan. And the dude takes it. The chaff falls out. The wheat remains. What is the winnowing fan? Is it the whole world? Is it the Christian church? Is it the first century Jews? Is it a specific denomination of those that are right, that get it? It almost doesn't matter because at the end, Jesus is separating his wheat from the chaff with a winnowing fan. And your lineage, your ties to Abraham aren't going to matter anymore. Let's go ahead and look at some other interesting things on this note. Luke chapter 9. Jesus forbids sectarianism. And I want us to think about what this means after we read these two verses, 9, 49, and 50. Now John answered and said, Master, we saw someone casting out demons in your name, and we forbade him because he does not follow with us. But Jesus said to them, do not forbid him, for he who is not against us is on our side. Let me read it again, because it happens again in Luke 10 when the 70 go out. They were amazed by the power that they had been given to control spirits. And Jesus is like, look, just be glad you have a seat on the bus, okay? John said to Jesus, Master, we heard people casting out demons in your name and we told them to stop because they're not with us. No, no, no. Don't tell them to stop. If they are not against us, they are with us. Does it sound to you like Jesus is saying anything other than that following him is the way? My point to you would be Jesus is calling us out of systems institutions unto himself following him is the only way he is the answer yes there are deep questions about jesus yes there are things we will never know yes there are great mysteries yes the veil has been torn in two and we can know certain truths about god and there are certain things we won't know until eternal life but jesus is the answer he is the way he is the truth. He is the life. That means he is the answer. The communion of people, Christians, in Christ is meant to be as diverse and as different as it can be. 
I have seen in my life that you will find just as many true Christians in this denomination that you will find in that one. They are called out of this one. They are called out of that one. Even those crazy ones, they're called out of that one too. Because remember, what we're reading and what we will continue to read in Scripture is that Christianity that matters is what happens when someone knocks on your door. When someone asks something of you and what takes place in the private prayer closet. Let's go ahead now to Luke 11. A house divided cannot stand. The whole point of this passage is someone was casting out a demon. Someone claimed, well, he's a devil. Well, how can you, how can a devil cast out a devil? That's the point, right? But a house divided cannot stand. Okay. That means if the concept is that Christianity is supposed to be one universal group as a religion, as an institution, it doesn't bear out with the evidence that we see here. Christianity is what happens in the life of an individual that God calls out and reveals that Jesus Christ is the answer. Let me prove it. Chapter 12, verse 30. Verse 49, we're going to find Christ himself bringing division. House divided cannot stand. John the Baptist, hey, who told y'all institutional people about what's happening? Get baptized, repent, because it's coming. Your claim to Abraham's not going to matter anymore because I say God could turn these stones into sons of Abraham. House divided cannot stand. And then in 12, 49, I come to send fire on the earth and how I wish it were already kindled. John told us that. He's bringing Holy Spirit and fire. Okay. But I have a baptism to be baptized with and how distressed I am till it is accomplished. Do you suppose that I came to give peace on earth? I tell you not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five in one house will be divided, three against two and two against three. Father will be divided against son and son against father, mother against daughter and daughter against mother, mother mother-in-law against her daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against her mother-in-law. Why? Genesis 11. Let us make a name unto ourselves. You don't think that includes building our own church, our own denomination, our own claim to absolute truth? Jesus is calling people out of institutions. John the Baptist is looking at him on the hillside and saying, Your claims and lineages won't matter. I'm saying what matters in Christianity is that Jesus is the answer and how you are identified is what happens when someone knocks on your door and what happens when you are alone on your knees in prayer with the Lord. House divided cannot stand and Jesus is the one bringing the fire and division. Now let's look at Luke 13, the narrow way because we're going to see something interesting. And he went through the cities and villages teaching and journeying toward Jerusalem, evermore toward Jerusalem, the major city, the major institutions. Then one said to him, Lord, are there few who are saved? And he said to them, strive to enter through the narrow gate. For many, I say to you, will seek to enter and will not be able When once the master of the house has risen up and shut the door and you begin to stand outside and knock at the door saying, Lord, Lord, open up for us. And he'll answer and say to you, I don't know you. Where are you from? Then you'll begin to say, we ate and drank in your presence and you taught in our streets. You remember us? We were those guys. We, yeah. But he'll say, I tell you, I don't know you. Where are you from? Depart from me, all you workers of iniquity. This thing can't be faked. You belonging to a certain denomination and thinking that that is enough? That that home base that you cling to is what's up? That's not what's up. We've read all this evidence straight from scripture that that's not what's up. Do you really think the narrow way is the way that you happen to have found but no one else has found it? His yoke is easy and his burden is light. And the life of a Christian is a very private, real, tangible, Holy Spirit-driven thing. And I'm not going to criticize any denomination because I've seen acts of the Holy Spirit just this last week. Young Catholic priest I met. 
Uh, I sat down and talked to him, needed someone to talk to. He gave great advice. And I saw the work of the Holy Spirit in that. Just last night, I was at a non-denominational church working with a pastor and his wife, and I saw the work of the Holy Spirit in that. Just last week, I met a bis- uh, with a bishop from, a, uh, I think, a Pentecostal church. They're one that's Pentecostals. But the work of the Holy Spirit in that. It's not about denominations. That's what I'm teaching you in church history, folks. It's about the narrow way. It's about Jesus saying, I'm calling all of you out of all these things. It's as diverse as it gets. The winnowing fan, remember, he's got it. It all comes down to what you think the winnowing fan is. Is that winnowing fan just the whole world? Is it the church of his? Is it Judaism? What is in the winnowing fan? It's us, but what is the winnowing fan? Is it all people? It doesn't matter because Jesus is separating wheat from chaff in it. Are you wheat or are you chaff? Bear fruit worthy of repentance. Your claims to Abraham won't matter. Your lineage won't matter. The denomination you claim won't matter. The flag you rep won't matter. Now, I wanted to go on to show you, there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth, find the narrow way, I won't know you, turn away, whatever. But listen to this, weeping and gnashing of teeth when you see Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and all these prophets in the kingdom of God and yourselves thrust out. Didn't we hear John the Baptist say, your claims to Abraham won't mean anything? And here Jesus is saying, your claims to Abraham won't mean anything. That's as if there's like a universal common denominator here. There is. Let's end with Luke 16. 20 through 37, about the coming of the kingdom. Now, when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come, he answered them and said, the kingdom of God does not come with observation. Nor will they say, see here or see there, for indeed the kingdom of God is within you. But first he must suffer many things and be rejected by his generation. Jesus is going to be rejected. You're going to be rejected. They're going to hate you. You're going to feel like an outsider. They're going to call you a know-it-all. They're going to turn their back on you. A real Christian is an outsider. If you're an insider, maybe you should think about the winnowing fan because it's not about any of that. It's about what happens when someone knocks on your door and what happens when you are in prayer on your knees. Please support our work if you can. Uh, I believe that God will meet my needs, so I do have a PayPal, a Venmo, and a Cash App, uh, but you need to pray about whether or not you should give, and if you feel so compelled, please do. Uh, This is in part how God meets my needs and the needs of my family. If you liked this video, watch another one here. If you'd like to purchase any of the books that I've written, amazon.com slash author slash Nicholas Garrett. Join, become a channel member.